The difference is whether we know. Choosing to make a count changes the experimental result on our laboratory table. Well, what's up with that? Um, interesting theory, Mr. Rook. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's leave the detectors at the flip on. Aren't we good? Okay. And wait a while. We're going to wait a while. Uh, we're going to let the detectors do this stuff, but then we're going to put it into an eternal loop uh, and not look at it right away. And uh, eventually, we will count them up at the flip. But not right away. And we wait, wait even longer. And then after we've decided, well, should we look at it? Should we not look at it? Then we'll look at the back wall and see what happens. See what kind of a pattern we get. Okay? Here's how it's going to work. We're going to throw particles at the double slip. We are going to detect them at the slip. We are going to collect the information. And then, after a while, we're either going to count them or we're going to erase the information and not count them. Then we're going to look at the back wall. One more time. We're going to throw the particles at the double slip. We're going to detect them, whatever those little things do. Uh, we're going to then either look at that information so that we will know which foot they went through, or we will erase the information so that we will not know which foot they went through. And then we will look at the back wall. Are you ready? So this setup is designed to do that. It's designed to test whether it's going to change the result when we look at it, depending on whether we arbitrarily choose to count them so we will know which slip they went through, or choose to erase the, I don't want to know, I don't want to know, I don't want to know, and then look at the back wall. So we can either choose to know which slip they went through, or we can choose not to know which slip they went through at the time we look at the back wall. By which time, of course, they've already piled up long ago. Okay, we call this a delayed choice. And we can make this choice out of, uh, based on what we had for breakfast, based on whether the snowflake fell on our nose or our lip. We can make it based on what we call sheer cussedness. Ah, I'm not going to get the information. I don't want to know. Or I want to know. Okay, this is what we're going to try. And it's a very interesting kind of exercise. So here we go. Boom. Vroom, vroom, vroom. They're being detected. They're being detected. We are collecting the information, but we're putting it into an eternal loop. And so we're not doing anything with this information. We are waiting. We are waiting. We are waiting until these things stop. Okay. Now, the information is there if we want to look at it. And if we don't want to look at it, we can just erase and get rid of it. And we haven't looked at the back wall yet. But have all these particles hit the back wall? Yeah. We didn't stop them going through the slip. They go through, they hit the back wall, but we're not looking at the back wall yet. Just like we're not looking at the information yet. But first we're going to decide whether to look at the information. And this is the data. And because, you know, limitations of PowerPoint being what they are, I had to decide one way or the other. And in advance, I couldn't take a vote, which I'd like to do. Um, but this time we're going to keep the data. What will we see when we look at the back wall? If Mr. Rhodes is right, about his theory, his crazy theory. What should we see at the back wall? Hmm? Two primes. What? Yeah. And my theory is that it's because we know. And we, this time we decided to look at the information. We decided to know. Now we're going to look at the back wall with that information in mind. And two primes. Good. And you look at the, the, the tag, uh, green or red, depending on which that they went through, because I'm indicating here that I know which slip those went through. Okay, let's do it again. Send them through, send them through, send them through. Three. Anybody counting? There's 12 times I'm doing 
Okay. And now, you just look at it in the loop, in the loop, in the loop, and am I going to look at it or not? No, I'm going to erase it. Yes, thank you. I'm so glad you voted that way. Uh, you read my mind, and this time, we're going to erase it. We're not going to count. The information was there, but even though it flashed on your screen, that was just to indicate that it is available, but we never look at it. We never look at it. We erase it before it could be looked at. And now we're going to look at the back screen. Oh. This, is, this is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful experiment. I labeled it delayed choice. It was um, first thought of in the 60s and 70s, right, where the scientists said, if you're serious about what you're saying, then you know what? We could erase the data and then look at the back wall and the result would change depending on what we decided to look at or not look at. If you're serious, that's what would happen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what would happen. Yeah, right. And they devised an experiment to actually do that. And this is actually what happens. This is the late choice double slit experiment. Send the particles through, detect them, collect the data, but don't look at it until we decide whether to count them or to erase them and not count them. And then we look at the back wall and the pattern is going to change depending on whether we choose to look at the data or whether we choose to erase the data. The particles hit wherever they hit. Yesterday, we make our choice whether to know and whether to look at them today. And the results yesterday are going to depend on what we know today. Shouldn't the statistical pattern that built up yesterday have been determined before we chose whether to know? Shouldn't it? Yeah. Can anybody argue with that? It should have. It should have. But I guess it wasn't, because that's what happened. That's what happened. One more thing. Oh, let's see. Uh, let me summarize uh, the what's called the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics. Uh, the standard interpretation for the last 75 years. This was this interpretation was fixed in 1927. Despite the fact that the machine had registered something at the switch and the back wall, there is no information at the back wall until we choose to look at it. Uh, when we choose to look at it, the information about where the particles hit at the back wall will be created. We want information. Now there is information. The result will be different depending on our knowledge or lack of knowledge of the position of the particles at the slip. So, one more thing. I gotta take a breath. Um, question. Good. Anyone, has anyone heard that saying? If a tree falls in the, it's a rhetorical question. If a tree falls in the forest and nobody is around to hear it, has it made a sound? That's an old, uh, rhetorical question. Um, all right. So, if a particle goes through a double slit and nobody is observing it and nobody bothers to look where it landed, did it land? That is exactly the analogy. Because quantum mechanics provides an answer to that question. The answer is no. It didn't land until someone looked for it. And then it did land yesterday. 